Head on over to G2A and enter Kami's Crystal Cave to get some sweet deals on crystals and more. Remember to click on the lowest price and use the promo code KAMIVS to get the best deal. G2A. What's going on everyone, Kami here, and I've got some news for you. This upcoming patch, well not this upcoming patch, but the new season coming out for Paladins is going to have a crap ton of changes. Well how do I know this? There's a podcast called Chain Reaction hosted by Kresnik, who is a commentator slash analyst for Paladins, used to be on a team with me, Realm Breakers, he was a tank player, one of the best tank players, and overall just an amazing person. There's a link of his Twitch down in the, in the uh, description, and there's also a link to the podcast that I'm going to be showing you a bunch of, just kind of the highlights to to emphasize my points. So make sure to check him out. But his most recent episode of Chain Reaction had two evil mojo employees, Adonis and Srixis. Srixis is a QA. He's usually the person playing when they go over like new champions on patch previews. And Adonis is a game developer for the game. And they went over what new changes were going to happen in the season three. Little hints here and there. And also their whole mentality on what direction they want to take this game. And I have to say, I absolutely love everything I heard on this podcast. So what I'll be doing in this video is showing you segments of the podcast and then giving my thoughts on them. Oh, and there's a fourth person in here, G-Bunny. He plays for Knights, the PPL team. He's an off-tank player for them. Incredibly good player. I used to play with him, well, against him back when I was on a PGS team with Kresnik, and he's grinded himself up into the PPL. Amazing for him. Kudos, man. And again, I'm not going to be covering everything, and it's a little bit edited for time's sake, so if you want to watch the whole video, again, the link is down in the description. The first thing they talk about is talents. Now, back in OB64, when they initially added four talents, and then they removed it a few patches later, the fourth talent, they kind of touch on the topic of, even though that talent wasn't being played as much, there's always going to be someone that's upset that a talent's being removed or changed. And even so, they have to make these decisions to help the overall Overall, as Adonis put, betterment of the game. But they do take into consideration the fact that some people are going to be pissed off if certain talents are changed or removed. Now specifically, the two champions that they went over were Barrick and Ying. I'll show you some clips of them talking about it and then I'll give my thoughts. To, to I think, I think Ying, if you're playing her as a DPS, you'd almost always want to run Focusing Lens. <laughs> I, I think Resident, like in terms of like, are there talents that you think are just being overshadowed significantly? <laughs> we had a discussion about this today. Uh -oh. yep. uh, today? Okay. For the new season, we're definitely going to have a couple talent changes. I was actually mm. going to ask about that too. Oh, yeah. um, Residence was one we were looking at that we felt like doesn't really do oh, enough much numbers sure, okay. wise and it directly competes with Focusing Lens. And I'll actually, I mentioned Moji, but like that's another thing, right? Because we, mm. talking about changing or removing things, we need to be like super, super confident mm -hmm. internally that this is for the betterment of the game. Because if we changed Moji to a support, right? Like, I don't necessarily think we're gonna get a bunch of new players playing Moji support, but, but you we're might gonna piss off speed. every single person who enjoyed damage Moji. So like I mentioned before, removing some talents or in this scenario, Moji, forgot to mention, the whole hype or word around the grapevine that Moji's gonna be turned into a support, a lot of people would be pissed like me. I, I have grown to love Moji and I think she's an incredibly fun champion to play because how much she blows up. It would kind of suck if she turned into a support. I'd adapt to it, but I think a lot of other people would just be like, screw this. So that's one thing that they probably won't do, at least in the near future. But about Ying changing the talent, I've never been a big fan of Resonance. You can go back through all my videos, you can see that I'm always playing Focusing Lens just because I like left clicking on people. But I do agree that Resonance just doesn't feel as good as Kreisling said. You're not able to heal while you're using that talent because you're just blowing them up all the time. And it can sometimes be frustrating when you have a solo healer Ying come in and go, I'm gonna go Resonance. You're like, cool, I'm never gonna get healed. It's just a weird balance. You know, Some there's a lot of people that play Resonance and a lot of people that come up to me and go, play Resonance is so good. Like I've seen Red Rover videos. I know they can be incredibly good. Good. Think about helping your team and healing them. Like she's just not it with resonance. She could be like an off support, but she's not really healing at all because you're just blowing up the things that heal. So I'm interested to see what they're going to do with the resonance, if they're going to remove it, they're going to change it. And as Kresnik mentioned, there are some talents that are just hardcore overshadowing other talents, making them just not viable. Like, why would you pick them? And this moves on to the next champion that they talk about, Barrick. Well, just listen to this. There's also right now the fact that Barrick has like a 60% win rate in PPL, but I feel like that's almost because the second pick team is the one that usually gets Barrick, and they're yeah. usually the one that's winning the set. Barrick is also one of the best yeah. champs in the game right now. That is very true. Yeah. Do you think that Barrick is difficult to balance potentially because, not just because of the turrets, but because he's his 
damage is so insane with Tinkerin, and that mm -hmm. being like this talent that everyone's running. Oh yeah, it's getting um, that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> We actually buffed the base shotgun, and it's better than it was before. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's the best weapon ever, but mm -hmm. like you're just like, nah, I'm just, yeah. it's Tinkerin. Yeah. You're a fat Cassie. A fat Cassie. That just sounds terrifying. But that's exactly what he is. Barrick, I when they buffed his shotgun, they talked about it. Like he, his shotgun got buffed, but no one really talks about it because yes, it got better. I made a video about it. I was like, it's better, but it's not Tinkerin. Tinkerin is so good that you're just why aren't you tinkering? I, I, I think I said that like a million times when I was checking out Barrick and on the PTS and when it first got changed, it's just why not go tinkering? It's just better. So I'm glad to see that tinkering is going to get nerfed and that'll allow the other talents to kind of shine more because I didn't include this, but it, Adonis talked about how Barrick isn't really even being played how his base kit is kind of implied to be played. He's supposed to be able to hold down a zone and set up turrets, set up shop and be able to hold people off as long as possible because that's what frontline should do. They should hold off enemies to allow their backline to push up and get kills where Barrick is just a fat backline. He can not only hold off his own, but he can trade. He can kill people, and that's just not really so much of what they're supposed to do. And this topic is further explained about tank damage. Ooh, a little sneak peek. But we'll, we'll get into that in a second because that's also related to another topic. So Barrick and Ying are getting changed, and Moji probably will not be coming a support anytime soon. I like this. Tinker needs to get nerfed. Resonance doesn't really feel like it has a place, but it may stay because a lot of people do enjoy playing it. But if they could just tweak the way it works so she can still kind of heal, that'd be fantastic. Now, the next topic they cover is about loadouts and specifically Adonis starts talking about the default loadouts that are currently in the game. Let's check it out. They're meant to be friendly to new players, right? They don't always match up with pro builds. Um, yeah. Well, they also are all level three, which we are changing, by the way. In, oh, in the next season. In the next season. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We're also going to have three loadouts. So there are, so there's three default loadouts. None of them are locked to level three. Ideally, we're trying to create one around each talent. Not okay. necessarily that's that'll perfect. always be a thing. Yeah, that would be. Good. Um, but like, that's kind of the, the high level goal. You can now change all of your loadouts. So you can get rid of the three defaults. Yes. And yeah. so what's so going to happen eight, eight, eight loadout slots? Six. There's six. So you okay. can't delete your default three. But you uh, deleting that. it you will reset it. it to default. Okay. But you can change it and save it. But anytime okay. you delete one of your three defaults, it'll just reset it. So it's basically a, an extra loadout. It's an extra mm -hmm. loadout slot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I already have five builds on Barrick and I load in, are my top two builds going to be reset? Uh, yes. Everybody flags. move your most important yeah. builds to slots <laughs> four, five, and six. Sorry. <laughs> All right. You got the inside scoop. Move your loadouts to four, five, and six. This is an issue that kind of pertains to me also with the whole, the game doesn't do a great job at introducing the mechanics to newer players. So. Having three default loadouts, then they said they're going to be going through and making it good. They're going to make where each talent kind of has a, a supporting loadout. It it gives that satisfaction, that that oh moment when they're like, I'm going to go architectonics and I'm going to pick the turret one. And it's oh, OK, I get it. Loadouts can kind of supplement or synergize with the talent that I'm using. And it'll give more players a reason to go and kind of explore their own type of loadouts because a lot of the newer players just kind of pick the default loadout and just say, let's roll with it. And that kind of hurts because there are some champions like Barrick where if you're not running bowling ball and safe, you're kind of playing at a disadvantage because Barrick is just flat out better with those loadout cards. I also love the fact that we're going to be getting an additional slot since you can change every single loadout now. So that first loadout slot that used to be staple, just, just static, it's this basic loadout that no one really uses. Now it could be changed. Again, these changes, I love them all. Now we move into a topic that hits true to my heart. And what I mean is this is an issue that I've had with the game for a while. I was actually going to make a video about this of like the top three things I hate about paladins, but now it's like bouncing around with the word hate because I don't hate them, but just not a big fan of them. And, you know, I, I kind of hinted online or when I was streaming, you know, you know, I'm going to make it. What do you think the top three things that I hate? And a lot of people were like, oh, burst meta, stuff like that. And it's like, no, these are more things that are built in base to the game. And I feel as if they're never going to be changed because the whole game has been warped or almost even balanced around these things that I don't like. Just to give you a quick synopsis, the number three was the map size. The maps used to be a lot bigger, but you also be able to mount mid game. I really like that. And they just felt bigger. And, and then in the uh, old mode, the old siege mode where you escort a tank, I always just enjoyed that game mode more, but we've moved on to siege and that's not going to be changed at all. And the number two thing was the TTK, the time to kill, which is kind of burst meta. But really, when you think about it back in close beta 30, that's when the maps got smaller and the TTK time to kill how fast you die almost got doubled. You died almost twice as fast. Now, I'm not going to lie, looking back at the old TTK of like close beta early, you know, 20s and stuff like that. The TTK was a little bit slow, but I think a good middle ground would have been between the old one and the new one because the new one still feels a little bit quick. But that, again, is not going to be changed. The number one thing Thing. I don't know if anyone's gonna be able to guess this. Just yell it out right now. What do you think the number one thing I, I'm frustrated with this game with? Did any of you guess Wrecker and Cauterize? Because if you did, 
you'd be correct. And this is the thing that's going to be looked at. I was jumping out of my chair when they started to talk about this. You have no idea. The, the whole feeling of being a tank and feeling like a tank round one and everyone's got level one wrecker or no wrecker and then by you know mid game and people have wrecker two and wrecker three and your shields are just getting evaporated or you're a healer and you feel like you're healing and then people start getting cauterized three and you throw out a 2400 heal with pip and it's a 240 the ye old 240 heal pip it just doesn't feel good and i get there's ways to play around it and the heals do so much that the cauterize is necessary because a no cauterize game is just awful so i was like i want them to nerf cauterize i want them to nerf wrecking like call me if you do that then shields and and heals will just be outrageous like yeah but i know they have to change they have to balance the heels and the shields around it but that's a lot of work and i didn't think that was something that they were really going to do until i heard this we have a lot of, we have a lot of balance coming <laughs> yeah to season three so that was kind of ominous the way i said it i'm really excited for it no, i'm actually I, very i think it's going to be happy. good and i think that it does lead into this kind of concept the interaction between items in our game and gameplay and gameplay flow is not something we're happy with right now. I'll take Fernando as just a super easy example. Time to kill of shields and my effectiveness and what my identity is as a frontline. Uh, round one, you throw up a shield and you're like, I'm not shooting that. It's yeah. like an eight second time to kill. Like it will end before I actually break through yeah. it. It's like, cool, we need two or three people to focus on this. And obviously that is not ideal in a team fighting scenario when like you have three people yeah. shooting a shield and not oh, getting yeah. any we, benefit. We know so how matter. much fun shooting shields is in hero shooters. <laughs> record three and you're like yeah. you walk out yeah. and you're like guess i don't have a shield anymore <laughs> this oh, has that been a, a little useless. <laughs> i am now useless as a frontline um so similar to what we did with the resilience and wrecker and cauterize cards where we remove them from loadouts and cards yeah yep. we want to make the flow better from there we started with bringing all wrecker shield health and reduce all shields across the board you will be able to kill shields without wrecker now and yes. wrecker three will not be an auto guaranteed kill so it won't be swinging your effectiveness completely and you'll be a yeah. little bit more consistent we're also okay. experimenting with cauterize that also would come with healing nerfs. Either A, cooldowns go up across the board on supports, yeah. which is a is a potential because our cooldowns are pretty short when yeah. it comes to support abilities. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just wouldn't feel... Or the healing though. numbers have to be like halved, right? That's part of what's fun about our game is our supports feel impactful when they do heal. Yes. Uh, and then they can kind of... Do they damage. can do damage, right? They're not the best at it, but they do enough and then their healing feels really good. And I think that's why supports are very fun in our game. So just like I said before, the whole having no wrecker, feeling like a god and people don't don't even want to shoot the shields to having record three and your shields are just useless and then the cauterize your heels just don't feel as effective late game because you're playing around walls like you're just they, you turn from like playing against enemies to playing against walls because you just have the time getting behind there so the cauterize falls off so you get a heal it's just not fun it's decently balanced right now and how everything works out but as he said they're just not happy with it and i i didn't know that and i was so happy to hear that a couple of things i want to make note of crestic mentioned when they were talking about nerfing cauter or you know nerfing cauterize and how are they going to nerf heals with it they mentioned about increasing the cooldowns and Kresnik was like, I don't know if that feel good. I, I agree. The, it wouldn't feel good. It depends how much they increase it. I definitely think the healing numbers need to be toned down, but a mixture of the two, like a lot of the healing being brought down, but a little bit of the cooldowns being added because you think about Ceres, you think about uh, Damba. They all have very, very fast cooldowns to where you just kind of heal everything you want. But if healing is more effective, that means you don't have to spam your heals on people so much because they're not constantly cauterized and your heals are doing nothing. And you have to make more of a decision as to who you're going to heal and make sure that you're playing whack-a-mole in the correct order so the important things don't die before you want them to. And I also do agree with Adonis saying that the supports in this game are a lot more fun than I would have playing, let's say, Overwatch. Now, I don't play that much Overwatch, but the supports in this game just feel like they can do a little bit more. Damba has a stun, Saris has Zarya's ult, which is probably one of the most impactful ults in Overwatch, right? I don't know if I'm right about that. It, it seems very good and Saris gets it, but the fact that it can be blocked by stuff, I mean, that's kind of a bummer. I know that Vex has been very adamant in saying that Saris has the worst ult of the supports because of how easily it can be blocked. I personally think it's very, very good in like casual and even high ranked gameplay, but in pro gameplay, I, I definitely can understand how it's probably considered the worst. But holy guacamole, are you kidding? There's so many, like the record and cauterize changes, I cannot stress to you enough about how much I was defeated. I felt like I didn't like it, but it was just part of the game because I was
I was like, there's no way they're going to be they're going to be changing the game from the, the ground floor up to compensate for the fact that, you know, Cotteries is going to get nerfed and Wrecker is going to get nerfed. They also mentioned that they were going to nerf Bulldozer and then bring down deployables. Pretty much the same thing that they're doing for Wrecker. The Wrecker thing is definitely coming, but they said that they're maybe going to look at Cotteries. I think the Cotteries thing is much bigger because Wrecker only affects people with shields where Cotteries is everything. Like think of items like Life Rip, Kill the Heal, uh, Rejuvenate, Base HP, all that stuff. It's going to require a big overhaul, whereas Wrecker won't be as much. It's, it's still going to be a lot, but the Wrecker thing would be a nice start. Now they cover one last topic that I thought was very big, and it's something that uh, it got overshadowed to me by this Cotteries and Wrecker changes because I was so excited about them, but it is an issue in the game. And Adonis, he was saying that it, it has a big influence as to why flanks aren't played as much. And it has to do with how strong front lines are. Just listen to what he has to say. We want to bring damage to front lines down. It, it just kind of, not not major, <laughs> not all. We are hitting some of the the, the problem children. Uh, uh, can't hopefully be not. Alice or Koa, can't be you already any mentioned, you've actually things. basically, yeah, you've, you've already mentioned, you already know who the yeah, problem children yeah. are. Yeah. So you're not losing 50% of your damage. Yeah, of course. Um, you're Thanks still going to be effective, okay. but right now our front lines are very much... Um, basically DPS with flat HP. I can't fight you. You. And that happens. <laughs> yeah. That has time. led to, I would say, frontline damage has been probably the biggest reason that you're seeing that you see less and less flanks. Now he goes on to say that flanks still get played, like more than what people would be led on to believe, because people are like, flanks are dead, but like flanks still get played. They can still do work. I mean, holy crap, dude. Sky can just melt a Makoa, but Illuminate kind of sucks. And that might be something they look at too, because stealth mechanics, they, they didn't talk about it at all, but stealth mechanics do get completely countered by Illuminate. So they're talking about healing being brought down because they feel like Cauterace negates healing, and it does, and Wrecker negates shields. They should help against them. They shouldn't negate it. And Illuminate negates stealth in general. General, so that might be something to look at in the future. Honestly, I just think if Illuminate gets brought down by like 25% per level, that would help out a decent amount, maybe even more. I don't know, because it's a very cheap item. But the fact that these frontline damage is being brought down is an issue with the game right now. Front lines are just, as G Bunny says, just fat DPS players. And Adonis does say that it's not going to be every champion. It's going to be the problem child, which you hear, I believe G Bunny mentioned, uh, it couldn't be Atlas, couldn't be Koa. Those are two. I think Khan also falls in that realm there. Uh, the rest uh, probably are okay, but those three are the main ones. And they're not going to be brought down that much. They're just going to feel more like a tank. They're going to be still tanky. Their shields are going to get better, but their damage is going to go down. So it's a bit of a trade off. I love that. I hate getting ran in by an Atlas, just being like, what the hell am I going to do with against this. All of these changes are just amazing and I love that they're coming out. One last time, I'd like to iterate that there are more things that they talk about. Definitely check out the entire podcast, link in the description. But those are the main things that I heard and saw that I just had to share with you guys. I'm so excited for these upcoming changes. Again, I just, I felt so defeated about the whole cauterizing record just being in the game and that's just how they are, that this is going to be such a breath of fresh air for me. And it's really going to rekindle my love for this game even more. If it's done correctly, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. But Adonis sounds like he knows what he's talking about. I've got faith in him. I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments. Do you think these changes are going to be good? Do you not like these changes? Or do you think they're going to muck it up somehow? <laughs> Uh, I hope they don't. I'm going to leave you with some good news that Kresnik found during the podcast. It's a super big deal, by the way. But for now, I'm going to head out of here. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Pretty Hair finally just followed me back on Twitter. Hell yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> how, long is I, how long have I been here? Hey, thanks for watching. I'm not going to be one of those people who asks you to like and subscribe, so... I'm not going to ask.